What's up everybody, this is Barry Fishank and today I'm bringing you an update on the Nano Reef tank. Um, so I just turned on the lights and the corals are not really opened up yet. Um, but I'll show you some different um, some different things that are updated in this tank um, and some things that I'm planning for the future um, of this tank. And uh, what I want to talk about first is the sea urchin because um, what happened the last couple of days was that um, for that's actually a really good picture right there, just look at that. But for um, for probably three days ago, um, you know, this sea urchin was surfing around as usual. And he fell down this hole in this cave right up here. Um, and uh, I saw him actually um, getting stuck there, but I actually thought that he might have been able to um, come up again and, you know, free himself from that because I know that sea urchins are actually... Um, kind of uh, mobile in the way that they can get out of pretty much anything um, but he stayed there for like two or three days and I was like that is kind of weird so um, when I did a water change I moved him um, down here and I inspected him, inspected him closely and um, when I look at the spines it looks fine there might have been a little bit of spine loss um, I don't think it's anything um, really um, critical but he has definitely um, lost some spines and uh, you know uh, I think that um, that uh, has been an indication of that you know he has been stressed um, but uh, I actually you can actually see his spines moving right now um, so that means he is still alive and you know I will I can still see some arms coming out you know the two feet coming out every now and again to um, you know to move around but he doesn't move as much as usual, like he started over here yesterday and now he's over here, which isn't really a lot of progress. Um, but when I think about it, I did a water change yesterday and a lot of coralline algae was growing on this glass and there was actually some um, coralline algae that was stuck down here. That's also why you see I don't didn't scrape this area right here, that was because the sea agent actually sat there and so I couldn't really, um, you know, uh, I didn't want to move him more than necessary. So a lot of coralline algae um, was scraped down here on the sand and it actually would um, would sit down there and I think he moved over to it and um, you know ate it and I also saw yesterday that he put some algae on his head and now they are gone which is typically a sign that he has been eating it um, which you know is a good sign um, if he eats he's probably healthy enough um, so I hope you recall well but he didn't lose a lot of spines he lost a little bit I think um, but that's fine, I think he will be able to recall it nicely. And the senior has been growing like crazy, like right now they're not all open, but you can see right here just how much they've spread. Um, like in the back here as well, it's just crazy. They um, climbed up the rocks right here, um, you know, looking really nice. Um, my, my clownfish um, really likes them, as you can see, he actually sometimes just go crazy in them. I don't know why he does that, because... Um, I've never seen any clownfish get um, being hostess in any soft corals other than toadstool leathers, but um, you know, that's what happens in nature sometimes. Um, my Kenyan trees are growing way too big. I actually cut them um, for a week ago, and you can see I actually got this huge piece of Kenya tree um, off from the big Kenya tree you see up there. Um, and the reason for that was because it was actually shading um, this coral right here, the Calastria. So that was kind of a problem. So I, I was, um, I was, um, I took a razor blade and I just cut it off. Um, you know that piece, and uh, it hasn't attached itself to anything yet, but it will do that at some point. Um, but they're still very large, so I need to do some more cutting, um, more than I expected. But they grow like crazy. I just don't understand how it's possible, but it's insane. Um, the uh, Duncan coral um, is pretty closed up as usual because the Kenya trees, when the lights uh, go out, um, they basically fall over to the Duncan coral and I think they actually sting each other. Um, and, the, and the problem here is that, you know, um, the Duncan coral is, um, he's actually reacting to it pretty well because he's still growing. I've seen three new heads grow out of him. Um, he has officially 25 new heads now. Um, so he has about 28 heads in total. Um, my frog spawn isn't quite opened up yet. It takes some hours for this guy to open up. But um, I want to l let you guys see here. 
like the amazing amount of, of flesh it has grown right here. You can see the tissue it has grown out of the skeleton right there. It's insane. Um, it's like a huge belly right there. Um, I hope that will um, open up very nicely again today. Um, since I did a water change yesterday and a lot of the trace elements have been, um, you know, refreshed up um, so that they can go crazy on that. Um, and uh, you might notice I don't have the finger leather anymore and the cholesterol got moved. And uh, the reason for this is because the finger leather actually died. I think it got way too big for this tank. And it sort of um, got stressed out because it couldn't really grow anywhere. It would grow into the glass, um, which is not a very good feeling for the coral. Um, so uh, it would uh, immediately start to close down because, you know, that's its reaction. And when it closes down, you know, a lot of allergies will probably grow on it because the polyps are not out. Um, and, you know, um, it wasn't able to really establish the layer of, um, of fat uh, outside of its um, tissue as as much as if it was growing um, completely normally so it was kind of getting stunted um, and it basically just like rotted out um, but um, that was really sad because it was uh, as you guys know that was one of my fairy corals um, and uh, but you know I've had it for over a year now so that's pretty crazy um, but yeah what I'm thinking of doing actually is getting a um, bubble tip anemone I know it might be a risk because you know anemones um, move around like crazy so they might actually stain some of my other corals if I don't do anything um, about the moving issue um, but I don't know for sure if it will move um, what I will do is actually um, I'll move this cholesterol back to its spot if I can uh, then I will place the rose bubble tip anemone around here and I will see if it can crawl up on the rocks here and actually sit right here so that um, it's close to the clownfish's um, territory um, so that they easily can get um, a new host um, pretty quickly so that they can uh, get comfortable with the anemone uh, and as you guys know I've always said this um, when anemones got clownfish with them they always do better um, because you know they will help them in any way possible um, and the clownfish will also get a little bit of, of um, a good feeling a cozy feeling out of it because when they're down in an, in an anemone um, you know the, the the reason they do this is because, you know, in nature they need to find somewhere they can breed um, in safety. And when they can stay down in an anemone that has stinging cells on its in it, on its tentacles, you know, that will uh, make sure that um, any fish, um, predatory fish, will actually stay away from the clownfish in general, um, which, you know, is pretty important. And they don't know that they're not in the ocean, so, <laughs> you know, it's actually a... a I would actually say it's kind of a benefit for the clownfish because I believe that, um, or well, my theory is that it actually gives them um, a sense of comfort. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much all for this update. Um, or well, I can give you some few updates on the fish. The yellow tang is doing really well. Um, you know, um, he's just swimming around calmly as usual, um, picking on some allergies, as you can see. Um, he really enjoys picking on allergies, actually. Um, actually, when I scrape the glass. Um, I usually um, lay some flakes down on the, the sand with allergies and he actually just gobbles it up, he loves it. Um, the uh, damselfish still has his territory, you know, he just still does down around there. Um, I don't see him as much because he stays more down in that cave and he only really comes out up in this area around the senior. But sometimes he um, get uh, chased away by the clownfish uh, that are in the senior. Uh, my six lamb rest, um, he was... He was right there before, I didn't know, there he is. Um, but uh, he does around like usual. Um, I really like this fish because you know, it's cool having a fish that does around in the, like a stealthy little tiger around the, the corals, which looks really nice. Um, the clownfish are doing fantastic. Um, you know, they just found the senior, so they're going all crazy in that. Um, haven't seen any eggs yet, um, but I think they'll come when I get the anemone and um, because they're doing extremely well. Um, and uh, the skunk shrimp, the scarlet skunk cleaner shrimp, um, is actually doing very nice. He often stays behind that coral for some reason. I don't know why, but when when uh, I feed the tank, he goes completely crazy, and you know he just goes down to, out into the open and just eats like crazy. Um, he really likes that. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for this update. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you guys in another video.